Hi, it's Jamie, and today's project is a caddy. And I saw these on Pinterest, so it wasn't my original idea, but um, these aren't exactly the same, so I put my own twist on it. And so what it is is just a little caddy for um, these ones for salt and pepper. Um, you could also do it for oil and vinegar. And this one is just like for condiments. So uh, when I had these at the studio, um, somebody was playing around with the little plates and we ended up stacking them and I liked the look of that. So what I mean is, so when I did this one originally, I felt like, okay, maybe I made these too big. So then I made smaller ones to go in there, which, you know, looks all right. Um, and then I also did the same thing with this one over here as I made really small ones to go, you know, under here and kind of have a layered look. But then, when we, you know how things are at the studio when you stack things all together. So, you know, coming out of the kiln. So these got all got stacked when we were unloading. Kind of like that. And I thought, oh, that's fun. That's like a flower. So today's project, I'm going to redo these. Um, and I'm going to make them like more of a flower shape and um, play with that. Now the way that I came up with these patterns is using my molds. So I have these molds that I, I frequently use from the Ladybug set. And um, this one right here, this is the original one I did. I just used an outline of this mold here. So I just drew one circle and then did an overlap of one half of an inch to create that. Now the reason I did that was um, when I'm Later on, when I'm pressing down to create this shape in here, I need to have two side by side, and I don't want them to be, you know, fighting with each other. So they have to sit on there perfectly next to each other. Now, this size, um, I wanted to use and press this into. And so to press that into there, um, I needed to have a bigger form. And what I did is I just used a form similar to the size of this top. So I would put this down, trace around it, and in this case, um, when I did the measurement of how far apart these should be, it was three quarters of an inch. So then I trace that. So that's your super simple pattern to have. And then I just, you know, first I did it in newspaper, and then this is manila folder. So I'm going to put that there. And here we go. The next step is um, to press it. And before I do that, I want to get the handle set up. Um, the handle is just a um, 11 to 12 inch strip. And um, all I do is, it, when it's fresh, is I smooth it out a little bit. And then I smooth the piece out that I'm going to stick on top. Now this is fresh clay, so I'm just going to put it on and not do slip and score. Because I am going to press a stamp into this. So as you can tell, my I'm going to do a floral theme on my um, dishes. But um, the base, I like the circles. So I'm going to use a little stamp that I made. Um, with a circle in it. And I'm just going to go along. Actually, I'll start in the middle. And press this in. So I'm pressing into my strip already. And that's helping to secure it in. And then we're going to put it like this. So because this has a flat edge right here, I can put it sideways and it's fine. If you want to drape it over a dowel, that's cool too. So I think this will be okay right here. Um, just making the U shape. So the next step is to do the pressing for this. And what I need for that is um, some forms. And um, I typically will use my plaster. That's my preferred um, um, form to use, but I wanted to show you in case you don't have plaster what you can do. So these are acrylic fillable ornaments that I've got at the hobby store, um, and you can also buy them online. 
And I will post um, when I do the video editing what the sizes of these are. I think it's like 180 and 60, but um, it'll I'll have the mounts for sure when I do that. And um, what you can do is you can use these instead. So this is, these are the forms that I use to make these molds that I use. So in this case, I'll use the this, and I just need to use some kind of release agent. And in this case, I'm using um, the WD-40 I have. You could also use the cooking oil. And right now I'm just placing it on just to make sure it looks good. All right. Now I'm going to get the foam and do the pressing. This is foam that I got from a packing supply store. And I usually like the two sheets to give me more depth when I'm pushing. So I'm centering this on here right now and I'm going to push a little bit. And I'm going to center. Right. What's nice about using these clear ones is you can just see right through it to make sure that you're really centered. <laughs> All right. It's kind of a cool benefit. Okay, now I'm going to press together. I'm not even going to look at it. I'm just going to take it and flip it. And now I'm going to examine it and make sure it looks all right. And this is where I want to add my um, flat bottom. So, you know, you could experiment and use, um, you know, little feet or something if you wanted to, that would be nice, or create a ring to go around. But all I'm going to do is just flatten it with a, a flat board. So I'm going to take the board and go like this. And I'm going to go like this. Now when you're doing this, you'll want to make sure that you are level. So you need to have something um, to make sure that when you're doing this, you end up with a level piece. And the other thing that I do um, when I have it in this position is I'm going to let it sit on here and firm up a teeny bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to add some support here. Because I on this one, I didn't do that. I feel like this is a small enough form where um, I could get away without putting any kind of additional support on it. But with this guy, it's, it's bigger. So I just want to create a little bridge to go across here. So all I'm going to do is create a little Tootsie Roll of clay and smush it in there with some slip. So I'm going to let that sit aside and firm up. So what I want to show you next is how I did, how I do the plates. And um, I just have a um, circle here. And what I did is on my form, just so I would remember what size is, is I wrote down um, what I need as far as circles go. So for this size here, I need two of this. This is the four by five eighths. And then for the um, next size up, that's the three and a half. I actually need six of those. So I use four of them for plates and then, or I'm sorry, two of them for plates and the other four to create the spheres I have here. Um, and then, um, finally, the smallest one, I used two of the two by five eighths. So I just used my cutters to create these circles. So I've created these stamps here. They're just bisque stamps with little petals on them. And all I'm going to do is go around the circle and press in. Now that my ruffle is created, um, so I just went down in between the petals, I'm going to start pinching around the corners. So you have these um, little bits of clay, which are little spurs or clay boogers, and so I'm just going to pinch them in or remove them, but I'm just going to go around the entire um, flower and pinch in. The other thing that it does is it makes, the, it makes it a little bit more narrow. See how thick and chunky it looks here? 
So the pinching in gives it a nice, uh, more delicate look. So that's done, and now we go to the step where we're going to press it into the foam. So when I did the big pr the um, tray, the bottom tray, I used the big um, mold, and for this one, I'm going to use the next size down. The reason being is that I want the flowers to come up more. Um, I know that they'll nest in here using the smaller one. So that's what it looks like after you press. Now, um, depending on the kind of clay you have, you may need to let it sit up on here, like maybe get um, a container or something like this, and let it sit for a while before it firms up. Um, I'm using Sculpture Raku. It comes off pretty easily, but I think I will keep it on the container for a teeny bit before pulling it off. Um, and the other thing too is because I'm making multiple trays in here, I might want to flatten out this bottom so it'll rest nicely um, when I set it down on the table. So to do that, um, it's advisable that you do have something like this so that you could put it on a flat surface. And then you can take your flat board and just make sure it's level. Okay. So I'm going to let that sit up. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the little um, circles. Um, or trays, and I will be using this size for the pressing. The next thing you'll need to get started on is the ball shape, and to do that you're going to need um, a total of four of the three and a half inch circles, and what I do is I take the smallest um, plaster mold, and then I just start bending it around it. So once you've had, once you have it all the way around the mold, then you can, I spent all this time pushing it in, now I'm going to gently take the edges away and then I'm going to pull out the mold. And now I have this nice hemisphere. So I'm just going to put that to the side and let that firm up. Now you're going to need a total of four of these to make your spheres. And I'm going to show you, these two have been sitting up a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to put them together and get the circular shape. So uh, I'm going to need to score the edges. And notice when I pressed into the um, mold, I didn't press really hard. These still are nice and thick edges here. And I'm going to put them together. Looks like kind of like a clam. Once I've completely sealed the edges, um, it'll trap the air, and then I can eat, shape it even further. So this shape, it looks like a clam, but it will turn into a ball shape. So I'm just kind of going back around the edges to make sure that they are sealed. And now I'm going to do something called stitching. You can do it one of two ways. You can just take this and go around like this, you know, like a zigzag on a sewing machine. Or you can do lines. You're just bringing clay back and forth from each part to each other. And once you've done that, then you can take a little bit of clay, fresh clay. I like it mushy, so I'm adding water and just go around and seal it. Once I've done that, now I want to, kind of looks like Saturn, I'm going to roll it. And this is going to start changing the shape too. So I'm flattening out that coil. 
And now I'm going to take off some of that excess clay there. So the way that I do that is I'm going to use the serrated edge of my tool here and go back and forth. You can see it's starting to collect some clay. I'm going to further smooth now and get it into that round shape that I like. And um, when I'm doing these, um, I usually use, you know, a form like this, and I'll go around and I'll start, you know, um, just going around and rotating it and doing this to make it smooth. I think this is a little bit big for this. So in the cases when you're doing small spheres, um, these cutters are super nice. They're, you know, they've got the thick edge here. It's not going to cut into it like maybe other caps would. And so I'm just going to take this and roll it around till I feel like it's a nice sphere. So, um, what's going to happen next to these guys is that we need to puncture them. So one, you know, if you're doing a sphere, you always have to add a hole at some point. Um, the more that this dries, the more it shrinks, and then it creates all the pressure on the inside, and so your seams can come apart with the air pressing to get out. So we want to um, let these get firm enough so that you can still shape the outside, you know, and get into the shape that you want, but yet, um, you know, not as dry so that the seams start cracking. Just like everything in slab, you kind of have to keep your eye on it and, and just keep going. Anyway, all right, I could, it's just so relaxing to do that. I could just sit there and do it for 20 minutes. <laughs> the tools that you'll need for this is some kind of hole cutter, and um, I have two different sizes that I'll use. So one is the half uh, quarter inch, um, I'm sorry, not quarter inch, it's half inch, and then this is the eighth inch. So the, what I'll do first is um, I'm going to, there's a little blemish right here, so I'm going to make that the bottom. So I'm just going to take this and turn and turn. getting the rest of the clay out there. I didn't go all the way through because I want it, I don't want this clay to go inside. So this is tricky. I don't want the clay to go inside yet. I need the clay to come out. I don't want that rolling around there with my food. Perfect. So now I have my hole. So this hole will create a little tiny level surface for the sphere to, to sit on. So I'm just going to repeat that with this one here. Okay, so <laughs> I pushed this one in, and now what I'm going to have to wait to happen is until this is leather hard, and then I will probably use my needle tool to break it up inside and take out the pieces. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. It happens. Um, the next thing is putting the holes up on top. So these, um, I'm going to use once again the smaller one, the eighth inch one, and my clay is going to shrink 12%. So I know that these, when you think about an eighth of an inch hole, you think, oh, that might be too big, but not really. Not once you consider the shrinkage for this clay and then also the glazing. So um, it's really interesting when you glaze, you really have to make sure that those holes don't get filled. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one with one hole and another with three holes. And I was trying to find out what the standard is, and there really isn't one. Um, there are so many conflicting reports about what it should be. So I'm just going to use um, a single hole in one. I'll decide later if that's going to be salt or pepper. And then I'll do three in the other. I'm going to let these clean up, I'm going to let them dry a little bit and then I'll clean up some of the edges there. 
So for underneath the um, holes when they're done, um, I did I used a half inch, and um, then these things, these little rubber stoppers, I get for like fifteen between fifteen and twenty cents a piece at Clay Planet, and you get them according to the size that you need. So um, for when I use the half inch, I buy the three eighths inch to put at the bottom. So just you just go the one size below, you know, whatever you're putting in on the raw stage. Um, or you could just wait till they're done and then, um, you know, measure it and see what would work. So, um, and as also as you can see is um, I glazed all the way down until this spot. Um, and these can be kind of tricky um, firing in the kiln. If you don't want them to roll around, you can create a, like a coil and stick them on the coil while they're firing. All right, so we're going to put the rest of it together, and um, here is my form. Now, when I'm handling my slab work, I don't like picking it off forms. I like to use boards and then flip. Oops. And then um, I found with these plastic ones, you, it's nice to twist and then release. So it's not too bad. Um, there is a little bit of, you know, I can see where I pressed, where some of the design got lost, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, it's not really going to be seen because there's going to be something in here. Uh, you know, when it's being used, there'll be some kind of condiment or the tray itself. So what I'm going to do now is just clean up the edges a little bit and then I'm going to put on the handle. Okay, so the next step is to put on the handle, and before I do that, I'm going to put in the bottom flowers. And what this allows me to do is to take a look at the spacing that I have here. So I might have to trim my handle back a little bit in order to fit inside here, or um, maybe it's going to have to sit on the outside rather than sitting on the inside. So on these guys here, it sat on the inside with a glob of clay. And um, this one is a little bit different. This one I took at an angle and I attached it on one side and then I then I did kind of a kitty corner thing and attached it on that side. So um, my handle can now set up and I did this one with the intention of doing it across from each other. So I'm just seeing how that would work with the flowers intact. I think it's still going to work. I'm just going to put them more closer on the outside and maybe I'll put a glob of clay down here to a little ball to help with the, the securing there and then one on this end there. And these flowers seem to be fine with this. So I'm going to take this out and this out. And I'm just going to mark where they go. So I'm scoring now. And I'm going to put some slip. So you can play with the size of this handle here. I am, this happens to be 11 inches. Sometimes I do 12, so uh, you know it's really up to you. And sometimes I'll do less, like this one was less. So just experiment and see what looks good. Now I'm going to put the little uh, balls on here to help secure it. So I just I rolled a little ball and then I'm going to cut it in half. So now I know that these two balls will be the same size. And I will score. So 
score on the bottom. Actually, you don't need to, to score down there. It's already scored <laughs> from when I did it earlier. So you might want to take your needle tool and just use an end, the end of it, to, to make a dot or impression on the way up to make sure it's really in there. That's what I'm going to do. Kind of follows the design, too. I guess I could have used my stamp. And then just to be sure, on the inside, I'm going to repeat. This time I'll use my little stamp. Hey, and that's it. I am done with this project. So this is the most exciting time where I get to put it all together and see what it looks like. So I know it's not dry yet, but um, this is always fun to do. <laughs> That looks really pretty. I'm happy. <laughs> and of course these will um, sit on top of here eventually. I um, don't want to do it yet because I'm still setting up. Ta-da! So before I uh, go, um, I also wanted to talk to you about these stamps here. I made these stamps um, a couple days ago, but I didn't fire them. So these are all just greenware stamps that I used in this video. And so um, they will go to bisque, so I'll have them permanently, but um, I just thought it would be interesting to share, you know, that's what I did with them. So just real quick to show you how I made these. All I did is I took a piece of clay and I rolled it out like in a little coil and then I hit one down one edge down further so that it flattens out and then I just shaped it kind of in the shape of a petal and then I took a stick tool with this curved edge and then I just went across like this time on the inside of each side and that's how I did to make these petals so pretty easy to do um, so if you don't want to wait for them to go through the bis you could do this and let them get hard and then just use them um, don't overuse them because <laughs> they'll start falling apart but uh, why not anyway so this is the project for this week or month I <laughs> uh, hope you enjoy it and catch you next time